Steven, are you also a, a senior? I'm a junior. Oh, he's a junior. At Nova High School. At Nova High School. Oh, so um, this is your colleague. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Oh, no, he can, you can sit. Okay, Steven wants to sit. That's fine. We'll let you do that. I'll just, I'll just be right here. <laughs> now blow a few notes until you feel comfortable. Very good. Okay, I like that because already you're making a good sound before you start. Sometimes, um, I remember one of my friends um, who studied with Robert Marcellus. Many of us had some lessons with Robert Marcellus. But I tell my students uh, when they come in, this friend of mine told me once she had a lesson and she came in and she was a little nervous and she went like, and he said, get out of here. <laughs> she didn't get to continue her lesson. Seriously, he made her leave. He made her leave because he said, if you're going to come in and play half voice, you're not, gonna, you're not going to get any better on the clarinet. So I liked what Steven just did because he was warming up and he really was testing, putting some wind through the horn so that he really you know, uh, knows what his equipment's doing. And now you know you can count on it, right? <laughs> and I'm not going to have you leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just feel comfortable. Are you sure you're comfortable? Well, go ahead, play. Uncomfortable. I'd like you to, because I think you're blowing, but I'd like it. Can you try it standing? Would you mind? Okay, very good. Oh, and we forgot to say, this is, this is Rose number, anybody know? Right. It's one of the most famous. Rose number nine. And this is an excellent one uh, for an audition because it shows us a rhythm. It, and it also shows us some technical articulation, which uh, I find is very integral to a player. Of course, it's all uh, aligned with their blowing and, and such. But um, it shows you uh, some te technique. It shows some musicianship, because it's got that nice little uh, section in the middle. It shows you about ornamentation and rhythm, OK? Because there's some kind of rhythmic things. And I thought, overall, he did a very, very nice job. Yeah, well done. Do you take 
listens to? Yes. Good. And who's your teacher? Jennifer Lohr. Okay, very good. All right. So you're on a very good path also. Now, we're going to put this here, and I just want you to just try it. Uh, just try it and, and, and just start it for us. And really sing. Sing out there to Cassandra and Sarah. <laughs> Even though you don't know them. <laughs> I must say. <laughs> but he's like, it sounds so much better. And so as I say, you as a player are going to feel a lot better because you're going to say, man, I'm sounding really good. And plus, you're going to breathe a lot better. Now, I think you could even breathe more, Stephen, OK, when you start. Um, remember, an, an etude, this is a famous one. So it's sort of like you know a symphony orchestra that's playing Beethoven 9 or Beethoven 5, da, 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 da. everybody knows it, right? So it better be perfect and spot on, because everybody knows it. And this, you picked a perfect one. That's why when you wrote me, I said, yes, that's a good one. <laughs> um, so, so you, so you want to think about uh, everything has to be in place. In an etude, we know the articulations as well as we know. I know the articulations as well as I know the articulations to Mozart, Stravinsky, anything, right? And that's how I want the player to be. So in, in a way, if you miss an articulation, that's like missing a note. Okay. Now, some of these uh, depends what edit, uh, what uh, edition you have, but most of these I think are they're correctly written, and a couple you took some liberties with them. <laughs> okay, you're t you're exercising your artistic your art artistic freedom, but in this case we can't be too free, okay? Because it's something that's it's not like uh, what Debbie first played, which is. Uh, Osborne, where you can have a little more license to do things. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do, just try that first note once. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in your first note tells me a lot about how the rest is going to sound. So it's be, even before your, your first note is born, you're, you're playing it. And, and that means in your preparation of it. Okay? So what I want you to think is uh, getting your horn in the right angle. Okay? And we want to make sure we take enough read. See, if I start like this, see where I am on the read? No. So notice, what I'd like you to do is take just a little more. Just try a little more. And uh, OK, I said that first note. So off the lower lip, there you go. Good, good, very nice. I like that. Now, you need to point your tongue a little more, because I hear. Good. And hug a little more with the upper lip. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, you even hear it. He's like, yeah, man, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> you, didn't know, you didn't know you could play that, huh? No, so, but you have all the ingredients to become a fine player. It's, a, it's about these, the fundamentals. That's what really, um, you know, I always say to my students, my goal for them is to be able to play any piece they want to play, whether it's uh, something that Greg Oakes played today, which was an excellent piece, a uh, phenomenal piece with all kinds of uh, contemporary techniques, or something like a Brahms sonata. They all require skill and uh, a consummate command of your instrument, right? So your goal is to be to s make this sound very, very easy. One thing I will say, and I hear this often, are these. Yeah. Uh, they don't sound very clean. So. The grace notes are a little lighter. So can you just play without the grace notes? Oh, oh watch out for your angle. See, because again, you're playing into the stem. Yeah. Get it out. Don't, you don't need to do the graces. Very good. And try not to pulse with your elbow. He's, 
He is the uh, order of the field commander. I'm a drum major. <laughs> He's a drum major for Novi, yeah. yeah. right? And see, he still conducting. <laughs> Now, because what I must say, when you do that, it's just a way for the player to feel like they're, you know, doing something, uh, but it's not efficient for yourself. <laughs> Got my students up there, they're all, they're laughing. Yeah. Okay, no, so anyhow, so you're not gonna conduct like this. You're gonna, con you're gonna use your wind. Your wind is gonna be your conductor. Now I want really strong, very solid around. Like this. So keep blowing through. Just all one sound. Mm -hmm. Good, and I want less. See, I'm sort of exiting, but I'm not losing the tone. Try one more time. Very good. That's very good. Now we're gonna go. Can you just go? Just forget about this. Okay, but corner. Ready and. Okay. Now let's play together. Cause you're a little early, right? Let's play together. Ready? Now by yourself. And blow through like you did before without the grace notes. That's it. Now, very good. And think E and more upper lip. Very good. Now, what do you think about that? Much better. Bravo. Pleasure to meet you.